Hello, it's T. I was wondering if after all these years you'd like to meet to go over everything. No, I just wanted to sing the song because I have my new Adele mug and it literally says, hello, it's T. I love it. Um, and I figured it would be a good mug to start off this video talking about Red Table Talk. Um, first I'm going to read what's on the, my, um, the tea bag. It says, we are born wise. We are born complete. Pretty deep for a tea bag. And it makes me think about, um, marriage and relationships. <laughs> when is marriage and relationships not on my mind, right? Um, we live in a society or at least a lot of the cultural cues that we receive tell us that we are not complete we have not yet arrived until we meet our better half our soulmate in life when in fact that's not what the bible teaches and that surely isn't what my tea bag says my tea bag says that i am born complete we are whole in and of ourselves whether or not we ever find ourselves in a marriage relationship or any other relationship for that matter. That said, marriage is nice. And I wanted to talk about marriage today, not only because I just love talking about marriage as if I have any insight, but because of Red Table Talk, my goal, keyword is goal, is to give you my thoughts and recap the previous week's episode or the previous episode of Red Table Talk. If you haven't tuned into Red Table Talk, you need to start watching. It is completely thought provoking and um, provocative. I guess that's kind of repetitive, but it's really, really interesting. And you could watch it on Facebook. So I'll put the link in the description below. And that's why I'm wearing red to get ready for this Red Table Talk conversation. So this is their second season, season two, and they started off with a bang. And they entitled this um, episode, Becoming Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And Will and Jada sat around the table with Willow and Gammy, Adrian, Van, I forget her last name, Adrian, Jada's, um, Jada's mom. And all four of them sat around the table to talk about Will and Jada's marriage, their relationship. And it is an interesting one and they actually dropped a lot of gems which I want to share with you I have to take notes I find that if I don't take notes I get discombobulated and I forget what I'm going to talk about especially if I'm in front of a camera so here are my notes I have here first of all in the top quadrant of my paper that there are certain relationships that I consider as hashtag relationship goals. Now, no relationship is perfect. I know this, but there's certain relationships recently in the media. When I hear about one partner talk about the other or just how they relate to one another, it really just makes me go, aww. So those relationships would be Alexis and Serena. Alexis is forever defending, standing up for Serena. He worships the ground he, um, she walks on. Megan and Harry, their chemistry is so magnetic. And then there's Will and Jada, especially after this, this show. So, okay. So things that stood out to me and the gems that they dropped. And again, this is a spoiler alert. If you haven't watched it, I'm going to ruin it for you. So go watch, go to Facebook, click on the link below. Go watch that first video, part one, because it's part one of a part two series. Then come back here for the recap and give me your thoughts. But here's a spoiler. So how they met. I thought it was so interesting that Will met um, Jada before he met Cherie. Like anybody who knows, knows that Cherie was Will's first wife. So in my mind, I thought he met Cherie and then met Jada. But he met Jada and met, then met Cherie and then ended up with Jada. So I thought it was just so cool how he knew instantly that there was something about you know, his connection to Jada. 
I thought that was really, really sweet. It also made me kind of think that what's meant for you won't miss you. You know, I think especially as a single woman and there are many other single people in the world, sometimes if you've been single for a while, you you can be prone to fall into this sort of angst, like worrying and anxious and wondering, did I miss him? Did I do something wrong? Did I do something right? Oh my gosh, what should I do? And, and you just drive yourself mad. But I think this is just a really good reminder to relax, take a deep breath, and anything that is for you won't miss you. And if it misses you, it was never meant for you. And if it misses you and it was meant for you, it'll come back around. It's a principle that I've seen in my own life. Uh, and I think it's a principle that, that is applicable in the lives of others. Jada, by all accounts, was meant for him. He ended up marrying somebody else, but coming right back full circle. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, he said that he recognizes immediately when a relationship is going to be exponential. And I thought it was um, so telling. You see, the body has has um, ways of letting you know when things are going on. Eh? There's like two brains. You have your brain up here and your brain in your gut. And the brain in his gut was telling him that he was with the wrong person when he was married to Sheree. And so him crying in the bathroom, I was just like, wow, that's when it hits hard. Uh, when Jada knew that Jada knew the exact moment when she conceived, I thought that was kind of cool. I thought it was also really cute that Will always wanted to be married since the age of five. He always had this idea in his mind that he wanted to be a husband and a father. And I'm guessing that was particularly because of the environment, the really violent environment in which he grew up. Um, which goes to show that there are indeed men who have it in their minds that they do want to be husbands and fathers when they grow up and some of them to just to be better than, than what they had seen in their own lives. So key thing here that I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Will said the most successful men in history are married. Will said he did some research and he, he noticed that the most successful men in history are married. He said that if he had not married Jada, he would have run the risk of squandering his life. And he said that he only knows how to excel for a woman. And then Jada concurred and she's like, yeah, I think for a lot of men, women are motivators. And it's so interesting they say this because this is the second time I've heard this argument. I forget, I forget, I forget which book I read it in. But um, the idea that men do a lot of what they do for women, whether they know it or not. I think it's sweet, but I also think it shows, um, at least as women, how much influence we actually have, even when we feel like we're not getting through to them. Right. We like a lot of what they do is for women, right? Going to the gym for health, but also for women. Um, this whole bleaching thing I'm hearing about in Jamaica, I hear that more men are bleaching their skin than women. And the whole idea behind that is because men are saying, oh, the girls say they want some, some guy with brown skin, you know, like a browning. And it's just like, wow, so you will put your health in danger for the possibility of attracting a woman who will be attracted to your translucent skin. It's, it's really interesting. So the idea that women are motivators for men um, and I just, I just, I don't know. There's so many things I could say, and I'm really trying to make my videos shorter nowadays. Um, we have power. And I think if wielded properly and when in the right relationship, especially, um, our influence as women could really transform or help transform women, transform men to be who they were created to be. Um, I think back to Genesis, Genesis chapter one and the creation account and how God saw that Adam was alone and he said it wasn't good for man to be alone. So he'll create a help meet kind of this idea that women, we don't necessarily, I'm going to say we, our only purpose is to help men out and, you know, we're just kind of ancillary, but that we, we are the kryptonite. We are the, the back pocket secret. It's just like when they say behind every great man is a great woman, right? 
Anyways, I just thought that it was interesting he said that. I also think it's really admirable that they have committed to not swear at each other. Um, and they never raise their voice at one another. Um, I've always personally wanted to be in uh, the kind of relationship where I don't raise my voice at my husband and he doesn't raise his voice to me. And it, it goes back to this idea, and they, they talk about this in the video, that you're fighting on the same team, especially from a Christian perspective. My hope is that when I get married, I'll always remember that my husband is not the enemy. The enemy is Lucifer. The enemy is Satan. My husband and I are on the same team. So whatever differences or disagreements we may have, we need to put that them aside. We need to work through them, but put them aside and realize that we're not fighting against each other. You know, a house divided uh, against itself cannot stand. So just, just to really be mindful of the... Um, ploys and plots of the devil and, and trying to create enmity between husband and wife and just realizing that you're on the same team. I think it's really smart that they said that in order to do that, they had to discipline themselves to handle themselves first, handle their emotions so that they could be ready to talk in a sensible and, and a common sensical, that's not a word, in a sensible and logical and loving manner that's not clouded by emotions. I think I heard um, Adrian Bailon say, or Adrian Houghton say in one of her um, videos on YouTube about how um, she and Israel never fight, but how she, sometimes she finds it easy. Write a letter, write out what you want to say to your partner. So I'm just, I'm just picking up these gems and things, food for thought and thinking to myself, oh, that's actually a good idea. And that's really mature. Cause oftentimes when you go to the person in the heat of the moment, the words that you say may not truly be reflective of how you feel. And like Jada so rightly said, you end up arguing about two things. What actually got you into the argument, how you got to that point, and the argument itself, how you ended up talking to each other, trying to hash things out. And Will was really, it was right that once you start calling somebody a certain name, let's say you call your wife a biatch, a B-I-T-C-H, it becomes easier once you've passed that threshold. I totally agree. It becomes easier to call that person by that name and denigrate that person. So that's not a precedent that you want to start in your marriage. Uh, I think it was really cool that Will says he pre-plants his words and he'll say something like, I can't be loving or kind right now. Um, and I could totally see how in a relationship that um, is helpful to know, right? Helpful to know that your your partner is still angry um, and they don't at that moment have the capacity to give you what you need and what you deserve. And so they're able to communicate that with to you so that y'all could like separate. And then when one or either or both of you are ready, you can come back together and talk. I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's smart. Um, what's also key for them, especially in having such a long marriage, they noted that they were in sync on their priorities. So we talked about being on the same team, but again, it's the whole idea of like both husband and wife or both partners need to be, keep number one, number one, keep the main thing, the main thing. They need to be on the same page when it comes to what's important. And they, Will and Jada just show that if one partner thinks that family is important, but one partner thinks that career is important, there's going to be clashes. There's going to be trouble in paradise. It goes back to the Bible verse about how could two walk together unless they're agreed, right? That's why it's important to be equally yoked. And I think in Christian circles, we narrow the idea of equally yoked to like, oh my gosh, is he a Christian? And, and are we a part of the same denomination? When in fact, it's more so like, are we going the same direction? You know, do we have similar burdens? Are we sharing those burdens equally? Do we have the same goal in mind? Um, which is important. So at least as a family, you're striving towards something. Will and Jada, well, Will talked about how together in their relationship, they win, that they are, as a couple, they are magical. And I think couples, at least when God puts people together, assuming that he puts people together, um, they're put together to do work. They're better. They're, they ought to be better with one another than they are separately. It's like the song, right? Like 
I'm a movement by myself. It's really flat. Try that again. <laughs> I'm a movement by myself, but I'm a force when we're together. Something, something. I, mommy, I need nobody else. Because, baby, you, you make me better. You make me better. You know, like, y'all should be uh, moving by yourself, but a force when you're together, you know? And the only way that you can be a force when you're together is, like, if you have the same goal in mind and you're both walking in the same direction. And then I've always believed that when two people are on their own walking in the same direction, God often makes it so that, especially if they haven't met one another before and they need to become, like, partners, God makes it so that their paths eventually cross. Jada also talked about crying for 45 days because she was so unhappy in her relationship. And so that reminded me of the whole idea of like, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but lose the soul? You know, Jada has, has had everything, H loving husband, um, beautiful kids, great house, money, good looks, loving family. Um, it's access to anything that she needs because of her money and her privilege and yet she was unhappy um, and it also goes to show that again both partners need to be on the same page in terms of what's important and Will and Jada as rich as they are as famous and talented as they are they showed us in this video that it's not about the fame or riches it's about the integrity of the relationship so I, I would I was very, I found it really enlightening and I'm so glad they're doing this. And apparently there's a part two so that I'd love to hear and I'll, I'll give my thoughts on that another time. But now is a time when I want to hear from you, YouTube family and wonderful followers and subscribers, because yes, I know you will all subscribe to my channel. I want to hear from you. What did you think about that first episode of the second season? What do you think about Will and Jada's relationship? What do you think about what ha what they um, said about their relationship? Did it trigger any thoughts for, for you? Did you learn anything? Did you Do you disagree with them? Do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me? I'd love to hear all of it. Put it in the comments so we can get a conversation started. We can have our own Red Table Talk YouTube conversation. So um, yeah, I'm going to be doing these weekly, God willing. And let's get this conversation started. So you'll see me again sooner than later. See you at the red table. Bye.